Okay, so I thought I'd do a bit of a review for the Valyrian Thunderbeat wireless surround sound system. It comes in a basic 4.1.2 configuration, but you can get an optional center channel to make it 5.1.2. Because the Thunderbeat is a wireless surround sound system, it's probably one of the quickest and easiest surround setups that you'll ever do. As you can probably already tell, I figured I'd start off by just unboxing the various packages and accessories so you can get a close up look and just sort of speaking over it as we go along. If that doesn't interest you, you can skip along with some of the later content. So these are the four satellite speakers. You've got your left, your right, and your left and right surrounds. And the location where you put them is indicated on the bottom so you don't get your channels mixed up because you can't reassign them. Because it's a wireless surround sound system, it doesn't require any connection to like an AVR. It's essentially just uh, an eARC wireless dongle that you plug into the eARC port of your TV or projector. It handles all the audio routing wirelessly, so you just place the speakers where you want them, provide power, and they are good to go. It's Valyrian branded, but the speakers are platform agnostic, which is great to see because if you do upgrade your theater setup down the road, um, you can either resell these or you could put them into like, a, I don't know, another TV in your room or somewhere else in your house just to spice up the entertainment. This is the subwoofer. It's a ported subwoofer with a six and a half inch driver. You can see that the actual mesh there looks a little bit bigger. That's probably for looks reasons. I'm not fully sure, I'm not a sound engineer, but what I can say is that the sub is made of MDF, even though it's got that uh, textured finish that sort of looks like textured sheet metal, while the satellites and the center channel are made of plastic. The center channel also comes with wall mounts. It would have been good to see wall mounts that can tilt a little bit if you're mounting it below a screen. Not really a big deal. I'll probably 3D print something that will let me do that at a later date. And I can share that in the description, I guess. Or if you guys do it before me, you could share it with me. I wanted to take a closer look at the drivers that were inside the satellites. And so here you can see those 0.2 channels. Even though every satellite has its own upwards firing Atmos speaker. So the idea here is that you're using the ceiling reflections to um, present that Atmos sound effect, which does actually work surprisingly well, but I think it does require more thought into the placement of your speakers. It requires a ceiling that isn't going to be covered in some absorptive material. It should be flat and it should be relatively low, or at least the normal height. I think if you have very tall ceilings, that effect is, is kind of somewhat lost, or at least that's been my experience. Here we've got the remote going through all the different settings. Uh, you can go back and take a look at that if you need to go over what's there. Basically, there's different profiles for, for audio settings. Um, there's basic EQ that you can change. You can turn off some settings on the speakers themselves, like turning off the lights, turning off the tone that they play when they start up and connect to the dongle for the first time, and also for turning on mapping. So if you're not going with the center channel configuration, it's got a mapping button that will map the center channel audio to the left and right speakers. And you definitely want to turn that on if you don't have the center channel. The wireless dongle accepts a variety of inputs, so you've got Bluetooth, AUX, USB, as well as the eARC. The eARC's the only one with the full eight channels, the rest is stereo, but it does have uh, DTS Virtual X, which can, you know, turn stereo into surround sound if you needed to use that in a pinch. Interestingly, there's also an output on there. There's a 2.5 millimeter jack that holds a center channel. So you don't technically have to use the Valyrian center. You can use any other center as long as you're willing to use an analog input. But what I think it's really designed for is if you're using a UST projector or a TV that has a center line in port on it. And then you can use the uh, projector or the TV as the center channel you know, speakers itself. It's not great, but it's great to see that the compatibility is there. I think it's probably carried over from the AWOL side of things. I think now is a good time for me to mention that I was sent the Thunderbeat by Valerian. Originally, I asked if I could beta test it. They said that they weren't planning on doing any beta testing. And then later they reached out again and said, hey, thank you for the community mod work that you've been doing. You can have it for free, no strings attached. So I didn't have to do this review, but I really wanted to because I've been quite impressed by it. And I also think that there's not very much information about it out there yet. So hopefully this is useful for some people. Once you've set up your Thunderbeat, which took me like 15 minutes, uh, excluding the wall mounting part, it's seriously very quick and easy. You just power on everything and they automatically pair to the dongle. You'll wanna make sure that you enable eARC on your projector or your TV. And then you're also gonna to wanna to go into your sound output settings and you're gonna to wanna to enable pass through. 
I wanted to validate which audio formats the Thunderbeat supports in pass-through mode, so I hooked up my computer and played various audio files, and the long story short is that it supports all of the audio formats you would want it to support. There's a very handy audio format button built into the remote. When you press it, it'll tell you what format is currently playing, so you can troubleshoot very easily if you're getting what you're supposed to be getting. There's a bit of a caveat to that though, because not all TVs and projectors are gonna support passing through all audio formats. So if you're not getting sound, you're gonna to wanna to disable that pass through and you're gonna to wanna to enable the auto audio format. And most likely it's gonna come through as Dolby MAT, which is PCM with the Atmos metadata. Two settings I can immediately recommend, turn on auto dim and turn off tone play. It'll make your experience nicer. Now, for the frequency response testing, I originally did this inside my room, but realized it would be completely polluted with room reflections if I'm taking far field measurements. I don't have an anechoic chamber, so the next best thing was to take it outside and take measurements in an open space. It's not a perfect setup, but after applying impulse gating, I'm pretty confident that the frequency response is correct. I took all of my measurements using the Umic One calibrated microphone. Using Room EQ Wizard, I'd play a sweep and it would look something like this. Now, these are the results of the center, the satellite, and the sub. The sub is a near field measurement that's had its port and woofer measurements combined. All of them are targeting an SPL of 75. There's a bit of variation here, and there's strangely a very large null around the 3.8 kilohertz mark on the satellite speaker, which you can see in red. After lots of testing, I'm confident that this has something to do with the crossover design between the woofer and the tweeter. Practically, it's not something that I would have ever noticed during normal playback. I mean, the speakers sound fantastic to me. But these are the measurements, and the measurements don't lie, especially now that we've applied some gating to them. So that null is still there, and it's definitely worth Valyrian investigating because I'm sure they can improve it. I think it's to do with the phase of the tweeter and the woofer during the crossover period. I did try reversing the polarity of the tweeter and did see that that null disappeared entirely but introduced nulls in two different frequencies that I would actually expect to have been cut out by the crossover itself. But again, not something that I actually notice as an everyday user and interestingly doesn't appear in my in-room measurements, which have a lot of reflections, but does have a flatter response overall, which is what most people would want to see in a sound system. So they know it's accurately reproducing the audio that the director has intended. I've just quickly put the frequency response of the satellite with the gated satellite and the center with the gated center, so you can pause and look at those if you want to. I thought I would also include my full room frequency response. So this is essentially a measurement taken from each speaker in its location in my room, keeping the microphone in the same position and then averaging them all out together, just to highlight what I'm hearing at my listening position in a non-sound treated room. Now you can see here that the bass, well, you know where it gets its name Thunderbeat from now. And this is with the bass setting on the remote set to minus five, which is the lowest it can go. Now, don't get me wrong, in my room, it actually, I can't tell that the bass is that much disproportionately higher than all of the other frequencies. But I do think that the option for those that don't love bass that much should be there to be able to EQ it lower, at least in line with the rest of the speakers. I almost feel like there should have been a dial on the back of the subwoofer to be able to just reduce the gain from the amp. Similarly, I wish that the center channel had an option to increase its volume. I do sometimes find myself wishing that I could just turn up the loudness of that center channel without having to increase the overall volume. I also think that would greatly help with making up the SPL drop off above 10,000 Hertz that I'm seeing in my room's frequency response. I'm actually pretty stoked with the frequency response in my room considering I haven't done any sound treatment. I wasn't expecting it to be so flat between 100 hertz and 10,000 hertz. It doesn't really deviate more than three decibels from the mean in that region. I was expecting there to be a drop off above 10,000 hertz, partially because that center channel can't quite get as loud as I'd like it to be. I definitely wasn't expecting the peak on the sub to be that high in the bass region, but it does make sense. And I don't think it takes away from the experience or sounds overbearing at all. For example, I only run the bass on minus two in my current setup, but I brought it down to minus five for the measurement. I expect that in a larger room, like a living room, for example, it won't peak quite as high as well. A feature that would have been great to see built in would be some kind of room correction feature where you can either plug a microphone into the dongle or the speakers themselves maybe have microphones on them. That would be a nice to have. It's not something that I've greatly missed or that I think is super important because 
at the end of the day, this is a really quick and easy surround sound system to set up that's also very flexible and sounds so much better than any built-in TV speakers or projector speakers that you could be listening on and definitely blows any soundbar solution that doesn't have any rear surrounds on it out of the water. There's just no competition there. I haven't really touched on the surround sound aspect, but there's not that much to say about it actually. Surround sound is just so much more immersive than stereo. It really brings you into the movie. I think it's something that everyone deserves to have in their home. To measure the latency of the wireless technology that the Thunderbeat is using, I actually use that 2.5 millimeter center channel out port on the dongle as a loopback device. So I was able to measure the time difference between the signal first coming out of that 2.5 millimeter port and then coming out of the wireless speaker. And it consistently measured as 27 and a half milliseconds. The overall audio sync of the wireless speakers has been a complete non-issue for me. I cannot tell the difference. The only time that there is any delay whatsoever is when it's changing audio formats. So if you're hitting start and stop on the same audio source, there's no way I'd be able to tell that it isn't a wired system. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to say about the Thunderbeat. I did want to let you have a bit of a comparison between what it might sound like if you're just listening on the internal speakers of one of your Valerian projectors versus listening through a Thunderbeat. Obviously these recordings are not going to be able to give you that surround effect that I think is really the meat and bones of the Thunderbeat. I am obligated to point out that what I'm about to do is highly flawed. You're not going to be able to tell what the Thunderbeat speakers sound like by listening on your own speakers or your own headphones. If you're listening on a phone speaker, for example, you're not going to get much of the bass range and everything you listen to is probably just going to sound crappy. So go grab a good pair of headphones and then only compare the speakers based on their relative performance. You'll be able to definitely identify differences and I think that's useful enough to know what kind of improved experience you would get with a Thunderbeat system versus just rocking on with the internal speakers, which definitely work great in a pinch, but are just not nearly as immersive. I recorded the Thunderbeat in both its 5.1.2 and 4.1.2 configuration so you can see if there's much of a difference in terms of the sound quality that comes out of it, but that's not going to at all give you that improved sound stage that the center channel really gives you in real life. The differences are there, but they're very subtle. So I've uploaded the Audacity files where I did all the recordings so that you can use those to compare them yourself. One less share, right? Honey, you told me something similar. No, no! One less share, right? Honey, you told me something similar. No, no!
ਦਾ ਇਚਾਇਆ 